Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now when we talk about reproduction, because when we are talking about generating or producing organisms of desirable traits, so how do we produce organisms? Now organisms are produced by the process of reproduction. Now there are two modes of reproduction, we know that one is sexual reproduction and the other is asexual reproduction. Now the human beings in the concept of genetic engineering they can play around with the genes in the sense that they can just extract genes from one organism and put it inside other organism but they cannot ensure how the progeny will be they can just try to modify that particular organism with the thought that after reproducing the same type of traits will get displayed in the progeny but how that process of reproduction will happen either sexually or asexually. Now sexual reproduction happens in most of the higher animals including human beings. Now some of the key features of sexual reproduction is uniqueness, each organism is different from the other one. So if you talk about human beings, each and every human being is different from the other one. There are scope of variations which might be beneficial. For example, when we say variations, that means uh, let us consider a very simple example. Let us consider a family. So here you can see the father, the mother and the daughter. Now this daughter has got some traits from her mother. She got some traits from her father. Now there might be certain traits which is new to the daughter. So that was not present either in father or in mother. So it is a new trait and it, it was found that the trait turned out to be beneficial. So variation resulted in something which is beneficial. Now nature supports good variations. So there are chances that that particular variation might get transferred to the next progeny. Now another example is that of uh, the long neck of giraffe. Now earlier giraffes never had that long neck. But what happened was out of variations due to variations it happened that some giraffes started having long neck and it turned out to be something which proved to be beneficial to the animal. And that is how these variations started becoming more and more common. So in sexual reproduction uniqueness that is each organism is going to have its own identity and no two organisms are going to be exactly identical. Whereas when we talk about asexual reproduction, what, what happens here? Now this mode of reproduction definitely doesn't happen in human beings. But it is very commonly seen in lower animals like the bacteria, fungi. So there you see a lot of asexual reproduction. Even in plants you see them reproducing asexually. Now the main thing of asexual reproduction is clone production that is exact identical copies are produced so there is no uniqueness there is not much scope of variation so exact copies will be produced like how we create photocopies so that that's how they are produced so here the important feature is that the genetic information is preserved so whatever genetic trait was present in one organism the exact thing is going to be passed on to the next generation so that is the feature of asexual reproduction. So here we do not see any variations. So these were the two ways by which new organisms are produced. Now the question was what do we do if we want to produce an organism with the traits we want. So in that case what did we do before genetic engineering came into scene. Before that we often followed the method of hybridization. So in hybridization what did we do. We decided the organisms which need to be uh, mated. For example, in case of animals also hybridization happened where we decided which male animal is going to be made, going to mate with which female animal. And that means we selected our desired traits and made the organisms to mate. And that is how we tried to produce organisms of our desired quality. Similarly, in case of plants also artificial hybridization was done where desired traits of the plants were tried to mix and match and then they were allowed to reproduce either sexually or asexually. So we have studied about all those things in our previous lessons. But why did then we bring into picture genetic engineering? Because there were certain limitations associated with the traditional hybridization techniques. So let us have a quick look at the disadvantages of traditional hybridization. 
So some of the disadvantages associated with this type of hybridization is that undesirable genes also get expressed. Now, let us suppose if we say that, okay, we want a particular trait. Now, let us take the same example of the less haired cat. So, if we say that we only want the gene for less hair to be present in all the cats of the next generations. But does that happen? That really doesn't happen. Because when the process of sexual reproduction takes place, even though we select a male, we select a female with the desirable trait, but the result of it is not always 100% desirable genes. It also has some undesirable genes which might be a recessive trait which gets hidden for some time but that trait might get expressed again in some of the next generations. So the undesirable genes also get expressed whether in larger amount or smaller amount. Undesirable genes also multiply now as you know even though sometimes the gene remains hidden so maybe for one generation it remains hidden but again in some in the subsequent generations it gets expressed so the undesirable genes also get multiplied so you actually in the process of hybridization all you can do is you can just select the two parental organisms of your own choice but that doesn't guarantee that you will get the exact trait and no other genes will get uh, multiplied so that that is not guaranteed but in case of genetic engineering what happens is that you can choose a particular gene so if you say that i want the gene for less hair to be transferred to another cat so you actually extract that particular gene from the animal so you do not use the entire animal as a whole for reproduction you just take out that particular gene and insert it inside some other animal and that is how you are able to get only the desirable genes no other extra undesirable genes are getting transferred so that is, I mean, one advantage of uh, genetic engineering over traditional hybridization and that is why genetic engineering was needed even though traditional hybridization was in place. So if you look at the various uh, hybrids of dogs which were produced, you can actually see that not all of them were, have all the desirable traits. Maybe the desirable trait for human beings were long years, but when they actually started crossing different breeds of dogs what happened was some of them had small ears some of them had long ears some had more fur some had less fur so there were many other genes also which got expressed and that is how traditional hybridization works so now we here introduce genetic engineering because now we know its significance the limitations of traditional process of hybridization were overcome here because here you can be very choosy you can be very specific about the gene which you want and only the gene which you want gets carried over to the other animal and no other genes get disturbed so only desired genes can be introduced into the target organism now here we will take the very common example of the jellyfish which i had mentioned before also now as i said the jellyfish have a characteristic that they glow at night so why do they glow at night because they have a particular gene which is responsible for synthesizing proteins which in turn is responsible for that glowing behavior at night so if we are able to extract that gene and put it inside some other organism then we, we can expect that that other organism will also glow at night and it turned out to be a success this particular experiment so it was seen that when that particular gene extracted from a jellyfish you are introduced inside Inside the body of a frog or a mouse so those organisms were also glowing like jellyfish at night so we can define the process of genetic engineering as the manipulation of genetic material the genetic material in most of the organisms is DNA so we always talk about manipulation of DNA to bring about desired modifications in an organism so whatever desired modifications we want for that whichever particular DNA is responsible only that particular portion of the gene gets manipulated and the remaining portion remains unaltered now the question is how is the dna manipulated now the manipulation of dna is not a very simple process it is a complex process which involves various processes various tools as well as techniques and that is why we call it biotechnology because we are playing around with the genes genes are nothing but life 
So we are playing around with life, but for that we need a lot of tools and techniques. So that is where technology play an important role. Now some of the processes which would be involved here is extraction of a desired gene from an organism. Now just imagine how difficult it would be to extract one particular gene in from the organism. Now you might know that okay the genes are located on the chromosomes inside the nucleus, but do you think it's very easy to isolate a gene because inside the chromosome you have thousands of genes so from there you need to isolate a specific gene and then transfer that gene into a target organism so this entire process is not going to be very simple it is going to be a very complex process with a lot of tools and techniques and that is what we are going to study here thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.